This is the Running Channel podcast with me, Sarah Hartley, Rick Kelsey, who's just come back from Hi. Tenerife and still doesn't look very tanned, and Andy Baddeley, who ran really like fast the other day. Thanks. And is probably going to moan about it for the whole of this episode. Yeah. I did I did run fast. I ran faster than I've run in years and years. That's what we're going to talk about running this 1K mm. time trial. But mm-hmm. I ran it in a clean set of clothes. I hadn't worn them five times <laughs> on a, <laughs> a tropical <laughs> destination, unlike oh, Sarah Hartley. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's dive in. <laughs> All right, sweaty <laughs> Betty. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. So for context, basically, yeah. Rick was talking about how he doesn't wash his clothes a lot. And I said to the guys, Running guess, guess how many times I managed to wear a sports bra <laughs> whilst I was out in One, Jamaica. Two, three. I think four. I did five activities, but it was across four days. Uh, so like every, every morning it had, dry, <laughs> it had dried out. And I was like, I really like the color of this. Let's go again. I mean, I, I love the way she just dropped in Jamaica there, by the way. Just casual trip out to Jamaica. <laughs> I was on holiday and I just saw a picture of you because I don't tend to, you know, do too much social media on holiday. But the one thing I did see uh-huh. is you on a beach with the same bolt. What on earth? Yeah. Just, what, just, just how you roll now, isn't it? Just how I roll. Yeah. I mean, what? <laughs> it was incredible. Explain. So I went out uh, on a trip to Jamaica with Puma and obviously Usain Bolt is a Puma athlete. And so they got they got him out. The first day they were like- They got him out? What, they did got you, him they out. just rolled him out. They just rolled him out. On a speedboat, wasn't it? Is he, was, is he always in kind of really short shorts on a beach in Jamaica? <laughs> yeah, that's just where you'll find him. <laughs> My favorite thing was, so basically we arrived, They for the first day they were like, everyone's gonna be really jet lagged. Like there were people, I thought our travel was bad because we were going from London to Jamaica. And then mm. when we arrived, I was chatting to the other people whilst we were waiting uh, in the airport. And I was like, oh gosh, that plane journey was long. How long did it take you? And it was this guy from South Africa. And I was like, okay, you win. You win. <laughs> you, you and he win. had to fly That's somewhere well. else, I assume, in order to then... Yeah, to yeah he went like Middle three... East somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where he went through, but it was like, I think it was either London, two or three Madrid. different flights yeah. to then get... He ended up in London because I think he was on the same flight as us. But the incredible thing was he hadn't seen his bag since he'd got on the plane at, in South Africa. And then we were waiting for him because he was waiting for his bags. And we were all like... They're not, they're not coming. They're not coming but back. they did. That's they arrived. Three you, changes. you not only met Usain Bolt, you did a track workout on the famous blue track that like, yeah. if anyone's seen any documentaries with, with Usain Bolt in. Which is absolutely incredible. Sadly, he Mountains wasn't there Mountains in the background, that. right? Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Like we turned up, we had to start it at about 6 a.m. just because of how hot it gets. Yeah. And it was like mountains in the background and we could kind of gradually see the sun coming up behind the oh, mountains. And then bam, as soon as it appeared, we were like, can we go home now? <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot. I saw you doing, was it a hundred meters all out or was it less? It was less. Uh, it was about a hundred meters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you we don't know what, you don't know what any of the lines mean on the track, do no you? No so idea. They could have had you doing anything. Yeah, I was very confused. I <laughs> think I think that one was just about a hundred meters, yeah. but I'm not sure. The thing that I have never had as bad DOMS delayed onset muscle soreness as mm. I had from that track session because they got us basically. You had you rotated. Because you did it with the same bolt. No, <laughs> no, I did it with Johan Blake, Hansel Parchment, and Sharika Jackson. What? Very cool. Yeah. Very, very so These are the circles of the And the coat. And How long did you go coach. for? Uh, we were there for three full days. God, that's jam-packed. Yeah, it was just so yeah. jam-packed. But they got us doing, it was this one exercise where you're kneeling with your like feet flat on the floor. So kneeling, like you're making a right angle. And then you had to jump up from kneeling to standing on your feet. Oh gosh. And it was- I don't think I could do that. No, I couldn't. I, oh. They had to, the coach had to hold my hands. <laughs> Nice. Just so that I could get up. But oh, that killed off my um, quad. So try at home, but with someone to so help you this do isn't, it. I mean, you've been in Jamaica. Rick's been in Tenerife. I've been in Bedfordshire. <laughs> nice. Lovely. You're How going away that? though. You are going away next week. So you will get your holiday. Yes, to the wonderful, beautiful, incredible Hampshire. New Forest. It is my, my happy place. Nice. And is it supposed to rain? I haven't even looked. I don't care. Oh. <laughs> Just getting away. <laughs> yeah. Get away. I'll not be at home. I'm... Um, with my family and Andy Hobdell, who coached me throughout my whole career with his family as well. So Regular big, holiday partner. Love that. Love that. Your head looks better, by the way. Oh, Just thanks. in general, not your scar. Oh, yes. I have got this, this lovely <laughs> this scar here. has, has been gradually healing. It has oh. healed quite well. You've been taking your vitamins. <laughs> always. Yeah. Always. Should we talk about running? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, hang well, on. Hang on. No, I've got, I've got to chip in here. Oh, my gosh. Okay. She's segueing. No, no, she's segueing. Listen, I didn't meet a same Bolt when yeah. I was on holiday. Yeah. I did meet some nice people called Tom and Jess from West London. All right, in a, in listeners. A, yeah, listeners. Oh, really? Yeah. In Lanzarote. Hey, yeah. Tom and Jeff. <laughs> no, it's Henry. Oh, <laughs> you two won't believe this. I think I jinxed it. 
I said on this podcast two months ago, and you two ripped it out of me, that for 20 years, since I was a teenager... <gasps> You've never I've, got I've a cold! I've never got a cold. Have you got a cold? I got a cold in Tenerife. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sarah! <laughs> oh. I don't know if this comes across on camera to anyone watching this, or through the audio yeah. to people listening, Sarah could not be happier. She's <laughs> so happy that you got ill. I got a cold. We all was got it, a cold. Was it bad? Yeah, it was really bad. Oh, it was no. really bad. So Wait, is, this, is, this Tom, is this the people that you met? Is that their fault? I don't know if Tom and Jess gave, gave it to me. No, I don't think so. <laughs> what were you doing with Tom and Jess? <laughs> well, you know, the hotel I stayed in, it had a nudist, um, <laughs> had a, had a, had a nudist balcony for adults. So you could right. drop your kids off and go to a um, like a, a nudist Oh, so were you maybe... there the whole time? Not with, this, not with Tom and Jess. No, oh. but, no, but we, 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 that we met That's them. a weird Running Channel podcast episode, isn't it? It's like you in some kind of nudist environment. I mean, it's, it's weird no. enough that you want to do an episode Hang from on. your hot tub. Sorry, the, 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 we're the, not doing an episode We're not there. doing this. I was just saying the hotel, <laughs> the hotel had that. Yeah, okay, in, right. You know... I thought Andy, it a bit... if you want to go there, that was fine. But I didn't bring Rick dark enough staying. sunglasses to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wow. Do you want to know the best thing about that? Since the episode where you said you haven't had a cold for 18 years, I haven't had a cold, which through British winter, what? I feel like is for a two win. Months. For two yeah, months, you've for, not had a cold. You don't understand because you haven't How had a cold in 18 yeah, years. For most yeah. people, it's like a once a month thing that you once get a, a little month? sniffle. Yes. I think I think a lot, all of my children have got a cold at the moment. Yeah. All right. I mean, well, that's, really, that's like I'm going through. There's a reason they bad. call it the common cold. Okay. I, I think mine developed into the flu. It was that bad. That's uh, why Rick doesn't get it. You are the, the epitome. It's too, it's too common for him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is a he rises yeah. above the common cold. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> he considers himself royalty and has absolutely no intention of ever lowering himself <laughs> to, to have the, the common, common cold. cold. That's why right now he's like, no, it's the flu. <laughs> yeah, it's the flu. It's, it's, it, well, I'm pretty sure it's the flu. Um, so obviously the Canary Islands is famous for amazing running. You know, yep. you've got Mount T-Day in, uh, in Tenerife. James just ran around the big hill in Lanzarote or Gran Canaria somewhere. Gran Canaria, he was, the uh, big hill. <laughs> <laughs> if you have... <laughs> They're volcanic islands, right? Yeah, volcanic. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I didn't do any running. <laughs> uh, not at all. Not at all. I had the flu. I, did, I didn't oh, do any mate. running. I did, so I didn't I did, look, running. At, I did look at your Strava and thought it was looking a little bit Barren. Yeah, yeah. Bit like bit like the islands. Whereas yeah. my Strava Unlike has been his wine fridge. <laughs> well his, his wine fridge is probably barren because he, he can't top it up quick enough. I didn't drink the first two days on holiday. Because Did you, you get, were ill. Because I was ill. Yeah. Oh yeah. wait, how long were you away in total? Seven days. Oh, right. We were kind so of desperate had to get back in the end. Four days of family fun. You were yeah. desperate to get back in case we replaced you on the podcast. That's your biggest fear in life. <laughs> well, we're here today, aren't we? So you hardly ran at all. I oh, have been gosh. building up my running since this 1K time trial. I feel mm. like one of us needs to do the expert segue here, and I'm doing my best. Very um, good. I was very sore. You said about speed work, Sarah, mm -hmm. from the Usain Bolt track workout or the, the Jamaican athlete track workout. Yeah. I said to you guys, and you couldn't quite believe it, I was probably more tired after doing this 1K all out time trial than I was after my marathon. You know why I think that is because, so the video is now out. If you want to go over to the running channel, YouTube channel, it is out. It is called, I ran a one kilometer time trial. Not me yeah. personally, Andy did. And it is such a good video. And I know why you're tired because the video itself, you might be thinking, guys, how have you made a video out of Andy running for less than three minutes? Well, he didn't half go on about how nervous he was before. <laughs> and that was enough to make it a full 10 minutes. Yeah, and I, I was, think that would have used I, up a lot of energy. I did the emotional energy of it. Going back into that environment, um, so since then I've been just recovery running basically, and I, um, not done any workouts. But now I'm getting back into the swing of things, going to the New Forest, where I, it's my, it's where I had two Olympic kind of training camps with my mm. training group. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to do some running there. Um, nice. What's quite cool as well is Andy's son, oldest son Ollie, is now 18. But when I did my Olympic holding camps, he was. Uh, really little kid and, and would come and like hand me water bottles and stuff after track sessions and, and things like that. Aww. But now he wants to go for runs with me and he's possibly fitter than I am. So nice. uh, it's gone full circle, which but is hang pretty on, cool. You're pretty fit though at the moment because you've obviously just nailed this out in some decent times that aren't as fast as an ice skater. <laughs> yes, we did get to the bottom of Sarah's <laughs> confusion though. So uh, regular listeners to the podcast will will remember that that Sarah and everyone was predicting my 1K time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Sarah was like, well, surely someone's done it in under two minutes. And the confusion came because... Oh, yeah, you worked out, yeah. The entries for the 1K that I was in 
required you to be able to run a certain 800 meter time and they were under two minutes which I'm not sure I can do to be fair so I had uh, this is why I was nervous I'd kind of backdoored my way in um to this to this event this is just how Andy rolls he just goes in says do you know who I am and then just signs up to race absolutely not true I get volunteered and invited and all that sort of (laughs) stuff but I was because it was this was um my old racing environment Mm. going there it was the the top end of club athletics it was a big podium festival in Leicester um, around this kind of one kilometer lap and there were 5k races going on all day and then there was a break in those 5ks for there to be uh this 1k time trial in a cycling kind of tour de france time trial format so you yeah, went was, off individually which every i minute. think is is more daunting yeah. because it was it, mm. one you had that kind of you had to be there beforehand it's not like a kind of at the start of a bigger race yeah. where you've got other people to yeah. talk to or not talk to or like you've got you can see other people in the same state as you yeah. whereas because it was one by one it was kind of you had to be there a few minutes before then you saw people go off yeah. and then suddenly it was just you on your own waiting yeah. mm. being counted down from 10 as well yeah just on your yeah. own like how not, did that feel it's also not natural for andy probably because he's used to racing mm. with others yeah yeah had you ever done a kind of race similar to that no, I've never done a time trial like that. We would have time trialed in training before, but I'd often have had pacemakers or, or teammates right. that I'd been running with. So it's very rare to do a solo time trial. Mm. And the one thing that's deserted me since retiring is is I prided myself on pace judgment. Whereas now, bear in mind, I was trying to run as far under three minutes as I could for a K. Yeah. Anything faster than about 3.30 per kilometer feels just flat out, really. I mean, that's obviously not quite true, but it's very hard for me to gauge the difference between three minutes, 310, 320 kilometer. Yeah. Um, so that's what I was worried about. And then I didn't have anyone else to play off. I wasn't like, it's no tactics. It's just go as hard as you can, not overcook it, which sounds crazy. You're only running for three minutes. How could you possibly worried about not finishing? But it's, it's not the kind of not finishing from a marathon. It's like, you know, I might've had to literally wobble my way around with the lactate that just accumulates <laughs> in your legs. If you go so hard in the first minute, I, I had wobbly legs after about 45 seconds. Really? Like, really? You feel the so lactate, yeah. when you kind of started and went off of the line. Yeah. How do you gauge between, I'm not going to be able to finish this and I reckon I can hold this for three minutes. What's going through your head? Well, the hard thing is one, I was nervous, but I do need to be nervous. And we talk about this in the video. Mm. Um, and that, that's the point of the video, isn't it? It's to try and give that insight into the, the whole build up and me going back into that tariff, what environment that was terrifying for me. Uh, like, I feel like I'm now a bit more au fait with the the mass participation world through the marathon and so on, but going back to that that top end and, and also throughout the few hours in the lead up, just constantly bumping into people, some of whom listen to the Running Channel podcast. So, um, and, and some of them had kids with them who'd just done junior races earlier in the day and then they were asking for advice and stuff. And that was amazing. But then also I was seeing other people that from that world I knew in, in a well, former yes, life. You were billed rather highly, weren't you? I was, yeah, I was billed as one of the favorites, which is, couldn't have been the, <laughs> that's the biggest oversell of my entire career. I like it. Um, oversell, under deliver. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> um, but then even the commentators, so, so the, the start line commentators were two guys, Jake Whiteman's dad, Jeff Whiteman, oh, yeah. um, who I've known throughout my career and, and has always been involved in coaching and so on. Um, and then James Thee, who I actually used to race against. We ran the Commonwealth Games together and stuff. Um, so, so they knew me really well. Hannah England, also one of my teammates on world championships and Olympic teams. She oh, was in yeah. the commentary box for the live stream. And so these are all people that I know, but I knew from when I felt like I belonged in that space. And so Her going back to it, she was, was so good. She was good. actually laying into me. Oh. So good. She, she was like, this guy somehow race walked his way to a 349 mile. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I don't it, was my knees like, up. it was just like the little things at the start. Yeah. Wasn't there, there was also some reference to like hovering as well. Oh, oh, she's the, dead noise. She's dead funny, thing. Hannah. Yeah. Actually, I remember meeting her at the running show. Yeah, you were probably yeah. you probably panicked that she was Hannah from Australia. Oh yeah, another Hannah. Where are you from? 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 <laughs> Just give me your accent. Yeah, fine. But to, to your actual question, because of that whole build up, I, I'm so nervous. But then when I get on the start line, I'm like I, the calm kind of descends because you can't mm. do anything. I'm often nervous about are there little things that I need to be doing in my preparation whether that's mentally or physically. But once you're on the start line, all that goes out of the window and you've got to trust yourself. Yeah, like you warming up far more nervous than mm. you like when you were taking your jogging bottoms and like top off. Yeah, because then I was like, right, I've done that bit now. I've got you that out of the way. The waiting's over. Let's go. I, yeah. and I, I, that's in my That's yeah. really interesting, Sarah. Yeah. Because I think we should do an episode on nerves, you know, yeah. on, on race nerves and how to combat them. 
Because you wouldn't have thought Andy, with all his professional experience, hundreds of times on a start line, mm. would still get nervous, even now, a couple of years after retiring, mm. going back to competitive form of racing, that you wouldn't have thought that he would be nervous. What were you nervous about? I was nervous about making a fool of myself in that right. environment. Because you've been billed so highly. Not, well, just because that used to be where I thrived and like people, yeah. I, I, I don't think people really cared. It was all in my head. But I, I think, you know, I was a 349 miler. I was one of the fastest guys in the world. I went to the Olympics. Um, and then I go back and I'm very much not any of those things anymore. Mm. Um, but I had trained properly for it. I tried to to do my best to make sure I wasn't going to to do it. And that was that's probably what I would say about the nerves is I run better when I'm nervous. So the Olympics, the, the British trials, the championships, that there wasn't a massive difference in how nervous I was. Sometimes I was too nervous, like there's an inverted U theory, so you, everything gets better to a point, and then you're and then too nervous, off. and then it drops off. Um, but also, if I wasn't nervous enough, sometimes like after a championship, I might try and race again, and I'd be a bit flat because I didn't really care. Mm. Then I couldn't raise my performance. So it's trying to find that mm. optimum level of nerves. And I just the first few hundred meters of this, trying to pace it, I just felt such a huge surge of adrenaline. Uh, the sort of thing that you don't want in a marathon. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that, you don't want to come to the start line. Yeah. That you knew was going to run out after a couple of hundred meters. Yeah, yeah, but but I, yeah. I thought that might carry me through and it did actually. So so I felt started to feel that real accumulation of lactate and that fatigue after only about a minute. Um, and then I knew at that point I had you know nearly two minutes still to go. And it's just a case about then focusing on all the the muscle memory from a, from a previous life um, and the ability to kind of maintain that performance at at like at and probably slightly beyond my my absolute max my mm. red line like trying to just toe the line the right way so i don't end up wobbling my way around collapsing on the side of the track before i even get to the the finish line that is the difference between a lot of kind of top end athletes and then maybe people like average runners like myself that are trying to get there mm. like i think i've been in more racing situations where i perhaps haven't gone as far as i maybe could go because yeah. nerves are affecting me the other way like i am so paranoid of what you're saying of like getting the wobbly legs or like that happening yeah. that actually I'm being too conservative yeah. rather than going so hard that I might tip over the other way. Yeah, that was the thing I was most proud of. I think I don't think I left any time out there. Right. Like I didn't I didn't finish and go, oh, if I just pushed around that bend or this bit a little bit quicker, I, I was going my absolute max and I, and I I did get it almost right for my current level of fitness. Like I, mm. I ran faster, way faster than I thought I could run. Um, are we revealing your final time on here or are we making people go and watch the video? I, th I think we can, I think we can reveal it. I mean, it's on the results, I suppose. True. It was. Uh, 2.39. Which is exactly what I guessed in the sweepstake. Oh, not to uh, take well, your glory. The internal sweepstake. You're the not eligible for the competition. Oh, yeah, yeah, my, my, mine at 4.10 was a bit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had no faith in me. I did speak to someone beforehand. Um, this is in the video actually where they, they came up to me and they're like, so what? They wanted to enter the competition to, to win uh, life as a sponsored athlete. Yeah. And um, I was, that they said, oh, what do you, what do you think you won? I was like, I'm, I was like, like, if you, borderline, like right around 250, like then anything around there. And they just looked at me, shook their head. And I, they were like, I'm going 253. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, I was just like, took a look at you. What, and just thought you weren't, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're like this, no way this guy's doing yeah. it. So, but, but I. Does stuff like that though, I feel like you're the type of person where stuff like that makes you go like, I'll show you. A hundred percent. I feel like that's actually Were you in your East End beanie hat when you spoke to this guy? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I was uh, <laughs> You know, the one that keeps the ears out. Head to toe. Completely my doesn't team, do anything. My teeny weeny beanie. My teeny weeny beanie. Yeah, but he hasn't got any hairs hair, on the head yeah. top of his head. Oh yeah, but you're supposed to keep your ears warm, aren't you? Well, I, uh, sometimes that's too much heat. So ah. like, you know. He's only I, got teeny weeny I like ears. my teeny weeny beanie. I, I, I like trying to pretend to be younger than I am and in touch with the uh, youth culture in London, which teeny I'm none of those bean. things, but you know, <laughs> it, makes, it makes me feel young at heart. Um, so that, that was my, my 1K and it was brilliant and terrifying. And it has inspired me. I was surrounded by all these people running quite fast yeah. 5Ks. I was like, what could I do next? And so that is a challenge to the Running Channel community, which is email into podcast at therunningchannel.com with what I should do next. I think if, if I had full reign over my life and destiny, which it seems, it seems I don't have anymore, nope. um, then, then it would be a 5 <laughs> Which is weird considering he's the CEO. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm at the whims of everybody else. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to run a fast 5K and I have it in my I mind what, say, I, what I could do. Ooh. You've got it in your mind. Yeah. yeah, I want to be ambitious with everything that I achieve. <laughs> well, obviously you held the 
the world record for 13 years, was it? 11 years of the park. Sorry, run. I went under last time and I've gone yeah. over this time. <laughs> yeah, <that's fine. laughs> I, said, I said eight last time. And what was that? 11. That was 13, 48. 13, 48, yeah. So I'm not so going to get near that. we're not getting near that one. The, the, like, I haven't gone under 16 minutes in years and years. Um, Is that a, oh, okay. but I'd like to this year. I'd like to go well under that. Really? Oh, so that, that, yeah, yeah. I think, if, and that's the thing. If I if I decide to do my next challenge, I want to do it properly. So I've got a target for the marathon that I want to do at the end of the year. Yeah. Maybe a half in the middle. And then a 5K is what I'd like to do next. Do we know what marathon God, look, doing? Andy the runner is so, can we just it like is, flash back like, to this? This is back. He's yeah, back. like this time mm. last year. There was there wasn't this drive, there wasn't this no, confidence, there wasn't this excitement. We to persuade him. Welcome to do back, yeah. Andy Badley, the runner. I know. What I do feel a bit you doing, like that? by the way. I think it's likely to be Malaga, so we've got some exciting news coming. I love just, Spain. We're just sitting on it a little bit because we haven't confirmed everything. <laughs> Pedro but Peppers. If anyone's listening and fancies either a half marathon, oh my god, I'm trying to plow on, <laughs> and he's just talking about food. A good night out as well. I don't Rick's think we should take most the most useful contribution. I love Spain. Yeah. <laughs> If you're listening from Spain, we love you. <laughs> yeah, I Literally feel like great Rick, food. Yeah, there we go. Food and wine. Oh, wine. Right. Right. So good. Rioja. But White Rioja. I'm hoping that we'll have something exciting oh. to announce soon where, where, where I'm going to plough on here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Badley. <laughs> I've missed you two. I have missed you. Oh, I, I, have, talking about I haven't. I, 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 I was just trying to... I think he was talking yeah. about yeah. Spain. Come on, come on. We oh. might have something exciting for you at the end of the year to do with Spain and Andy running a marathon. Look, stay tuned. There oh, you go. It's more than that. I would like people to come with us. Come right. and run. There's a half marathon and marathon mm -hmm. at the Malaga Marathon Weekend uh, in Spain in December. We're planning on hopefully taking a kind of host of the Running Channel community with us. Really? That's um, big. But we're just trying to put the, put together what that looks like. So watch this space. And mm. if you think you might be interested in doing that, coming and experiencing the weekend with us, with or without Rick, if I'm honest, like you, you let us know <laughs> what... Um, <laughs> Whether, whether whether he adds any value to that experience at all, and, and we we will let you speak. So me and Sarah will definitely be there. Someone's got a Marshall event. Someone's got a Marshall event and do the socialising. Yeah, End Marshall day, event. Someone's I mean, got to Marshall. What happens if yeah, anyone like, in the weekend? You have to roll out of your hotel room that yeah. just happens to be next yeah. to the course. Yeah. just as Andy's just gone past. I was, was going to say, if anyone wants to be supported, done. when you guys are running, I get stuff. <laughs> done if anyone wants Sleep. to be supported in their marathon at the points which are <laughs> geographically convenient for rick um and, and don't impact on his wake up time oh my gosh we digress anyway look forward to that yeah. well done on your kilometer time yeah. I, am, I am pumped for taking on some ambitious challenges this this year the times are now what motivates me and just to see what i can do and how much better i can get with consistent training so watch this space Ooh, and this is the running channel podcast up next we've got some incredible questions to answer from you but first, let's talk about the news. This week's news is pretty amazing. It is absolutely phenomenal. And that's talking about the Barclay Marathons. Now, there are a lot of finishers this year at Barclay. Which is really unusual because uh, there's only been now, what, 20? Is it 20 finishers ever? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. And there it were three first-time finishers this year. Yeah. So I think, from memory, I think we talked about the Barclay Marathons last year on the podcast, but that was a whole year ago. So if yeah. you're not sure what they are, essentially it is one of the toughest races on the planet and also one of the most bonkers races on the planet. So yeah, there's no, no official start time. You start within, I think, a 24 hour period or a 12 hour yeah. period and you just have to wait for a cigarette to be lit. I think it yeah, is. Yeah, I think there's a warning before that, isn't there? Yeah. Is that, there's like... Oh yeah, there's like a little warning, but you just have to be ready to go, which is already going to mess up your sleep. And then when Lazarus Lake, who's de who devised it, when he lights his cigarette, then the race is off. Yeah, it's and you incredible. go off in loops and essentially you have to, it's all navigation based and it's map and compass. You're not allowed GPS running watches and there's no kind of official map course and route. Compass. Yeah, like no one knows what this route actually is. So you go off and you do loops and you have to collect pages from a book which prove you've gone to all of the points right. on the course. So you you can't yeah. go the wrong way, basically. Yeah, and but, it's but, five. But, you, but your movement could change. So it's 100 kilometers. Is it 100 kilometers or 100 miles? 100 miles. It's, 100 miles. Well, they reckon it's more. It's, but five, it's more because five, you go off. It, they say each, lap is each loop is about 20 miles. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's different course every year. And so. just to make it that little bit harder, if there is more than one, this is how like little people complete it. If there is more than one person going out on loop five so that you can't do it together, 
you get sent out in opposite directions. So I think this year, oh my gosh, multiple people started. Well, seven people, I think, started yeah, the final started loop, which is unheard five. of. Yeah. But then also Damien Hall, who I was absolutely gutted for him. He didn't complete loop five, but no. he realized that he wasn't going to make it back in time. So instead he just kind of wreckied the end of it. But it just shows like how brutal this course is. The fact that oh, so, you wrecked future, it. so is it the future. same in future years then? I, thought I don't were. know. I'm not sure, but that's kind of what he said. He oh, said he was just like... He wrecked the, the area so maybe that it might does, be. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's definitely always in the same area, isn't it? There's definitely... Um, there's also Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. And, mm. it was, and it started because there was a, a story about someone escaping from a prison in that area. And over the course of 60 hours, or which is the cutoff time for the Barkley Marathons, yeah. um, that that person had only managed to actually cover about five miles or 10 miles as the crow flies because it was so difficult to navigate. Oh, I see. So that's, that's, the terrain was so difficult to Yeah, cross. that's where it came from. And and they have loads of crazy stuff. Like if you get, only 35 people get accepted every year to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you get a letter of condolence, which is your acceptance letter saying that you're going to be going to be running. So good. And then if you manage to complete three of the five laps, which is pretty incredible in itself, that's called a fun run. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, but we which have... I think Jasmine Paris completed in 2022. Yeah. So Jasmine yeah. Paris, this was her third attempt at this race. Yeah. And she's done it. And she is the first woman ever to complete the Barkley Marathons. And yep. it is just, you might you might never heard of it, but you might have seen this story across mm. loads of really major news outlets yeah. and not just sports news outlets either. And I think this just goes to show like how much of an impact it is to see a woman complete a race like this because it, it's so yeah. inspiring. And I love the fact as well that it's not a kind of like one and done. It's the, yeah. it's the perseverance and the fact that, she went out and did it. And she also did it with 99 seconds to Incredible. spare. Yeah. The, the, and, and all, I think all of the people that started the final loop. So she actually came in fifth, I think, fifth runner overall. Mm -hmm. And the last one before the, just before the cutoff. Mm. Yeah. But I think they all took over 14 hours to do lap four. Yeah. And then I think they only had less than that, 13 and a half hours ish to do the final lap. So they all had to kind of pick up the pace. Having been doing this for, 40 hours, 50 yeah. hours. It's just madness. And the incredible thing as well is that you you don't really have that knowledge of like how long is left when you're out there. So mm. I think as well, we've got some footage which we put on our social channel of like her running in. And I'm pretty sure at that point, like she didn't actually know how much time was left. So it is that like she real- knew it was close. Yeah, yeah, she knew it was close, but she didn't know exactly. So it's that real adrenaline of just like, keep going, keep mm. going, try and get there. Yeah, we should get her on. Oh, yeah, well, we we're, tr we're, we're going to try for sure because I think it should be amazing to speak to. And just for extra background, and the reason that it's so, and she's exciting, is that a few years ago, she kind of rose to prominence by winning the spine race in the UK, but winning it outright. Mm. So not just that she wasn't the, the female winner, she was the winner of the race. And she was, I think, 15 hours ahead of the next person. Um, and that was phenomenal on its own. But then it was very soon after she'd had her, I think, first child. And it turned out that at age stations throughout that, race which is 260 miles or something um she had been expressing breast milk for her child yeah uh, at the aid stations that's amazing it's absolutely phenomenal Do you know what, it's, and i think she said in some of the interviews as well that it was amazing to prove what can be done once mm. you've had small children as well yeah so um or children because generally children are small when they start out uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, after that's, that that's incredible the insight from Rick. Insight yeah. From yeah. Rick. There's someone who has a couple. It's um, time for your questions. I feel like we get a lot of questions from Australia. Is that just me? We get, I, no, we do. We, we do. Well, we, we get, get them all over the world. We get, we, a lot from International. Australia. I uh, think if we were going to go on tour internationally, yeah, la, 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 we should go to Australia. Oh, I think so. Okay. Although I want yeah. to be on a separate flight or at least a separate seat from Rick. Why? Well, you can't face 20 hours on a flight with Rick. Can you imagine? Absolutely not. Well, he'll have his eye mask on <laughs> and he'll have already ploughed through five bottles of Gavi. <laughs> in first. I've got a new eye mask, actually. It's amazing. Now it's getting a bit lighter in the morning. Anyway, um, Rebecca Barter from County Victoria. Do marathoners really pee themselves to save time during a race? And also, when do you honestly think that hydration vests are actually needed? So right, both sides both of hydration here. Both of you... Do you know where the hydration vest debate is coming from? No. No. TikTok. Oh, uh, that's why we don't know. Right. <laughs> so there is a huge debate on TikTok at the moment. It might be elsewhere. I don't know. I'm not fully up to date of people going out for maybe like 5K, 10K runs wearing a hydration vest. Okay. It's becoming a big thing. And there's a whole debate of people who are 
from like doing longer distance being like you don't need a hydration vest for a 5k run however as a lot of people have combated it with if you need to carry stuff wear it whenever you like oh what oh i see so yeah, you're I not mean, using it to hydrate you're using it to carry your keys yeah because you haven't got a or for example i saw philly bottles. bowden went to go pick up some alcohol free beers and took a hydration vest on a 10k to load up the back of her vest you can't run back with with beers that i don't know so heavy. i don't know how successful that I, was. I mean I, i'm about to say something and then contradict myself um i was gonna say like we you do what you want yeah like but unless it's but there's guidance unless there's it's, guidance because do what you want is never useful guidance no but like if from it's from us no as in you should never do what you no, want exactly. <laughs> Uh, we, the running was, channel. If we just say to everyone, do what you want, then we're, we're what pointless. I meant is there's no judgment. So whatever you, ah, there whatever, you go. Yeah, a but, great but Nile unless Horan you're song. doing, unless you're doing yeah. sock shoe, sock shoe, and then there's judgment. Oh yes, yeah, yes. Um, so the <laughs> <laughs> I'm still hammering on about really, this. really sound advice. Yeah, <laughs> coming um, around it. No, I, I don't. Th I, if you're talking about it from the purest sense mm. of like, do you need to hydrate? At, on certain distances, then I'd say on a five k and a ten k, then then no. no, you don't need hydration vests. For the pure purposes of hydration, it's not. Yeah. No, not but required. then I would argue that is like a five k or a ten k in the UK. Like True. we went well, to go yeah. watch five thousand meter race at the World Champs in Budapest last year, and they oh had gosh. a yeah, water aid was... station out for that because it was so hot. Yeah, it's obviously weather dependent. And I did a ten k race in Manchester a few years ago, nice. and it was beautifully sunny. And yeah. I, I would never have considered taking water during a 10k but i did take a water after about six or seven k because i was parched yeah see whereas i did a 10k a few weeks ago now where they didn't have water stations and it, well, it wasn't that hot but i was like oh i could use some water i would say though if you are doing a shorter distance and you are going to carry a hydration vest then i would minimise the weight that you're carrying. Yeah. But don't take too much. You don't need to take like two litres of water with you for a 10K. Take a little bit to sip on and then make sure you get hydrated afterwards. Also, you might want to be building up to a longer distance and therefore you're getting used to wearing Carrying the it. vest, which is, is ah, different. That is useful advice. But mm. I like the first bit of the question. I'm thinking this is more interesting. Oh, Do yeah. marathoners really uh, pee themselves? On so, this. <laughs> so on I'm this. thinking about something we can't say. <laughs> so on this one, <laughs> no. Because it's, you can't, it's too yeah, hard. I've, I've tried. Yeah, I've tried as well. <laughs> I was worried about this for Valencia. And There's I was thinking- no way I could do it. Sorry, cool. I was thinking that for Valencia <laughs> Marathon, I didn't want to lose a minute or two minutes to go into a portal. Yeah. And I, on every single run that I did, I did need a wee. And I was like, this is going to ruin my potential time. Yeah. So- So what did, you, did you try to pee yourself in the race? Yeah, no, no. I tried to pee oh, myself right. on a run and I couldn't do it. Right. Yeah, no, I so I was the same. Berlin Marathon needed a wee the whole way round yeah. to the point where I was like, right, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to accept it. I'm in, I'm in dark coloured shorts. It'll be fine. Yeah. Can do it. You're good. Yeah. I, 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 so I, I don't... tell you when you can do it, though. People have talk ever, about it, though. So Have you ever run really, really hard and then you get to the end of like a hard effort and then your, your body is just suddenly like... Whew. No. All You've right. done that, have you? Yeah, done that. Just me. Did you describe you that as clearing yourself out as well? Oh, God. <laughs> Andy, <laughs> that is just too... I mean, no, that, that's what that, she said on the podcast that, that's, recently. I know, it's it haunted awful. me. Oh, what, I, I didn't I've sleep that, that night. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't sleep that night, even with my new eye mask on. Uh, oh, lovely stuff, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, we've got another one, though. Great. Uh, his name's Jorgen from Belgium. And he says, I started running two years ago and love it. And his seven-year-old son has joined him uh, in track and field at a club recently. But he can't shake the idea of racing on the track and doing cross country. So I think he basically, he wants to start racing on the track. He says he's 31 years old and he's not that fast in comparison with the guys who've done it since they were kids. The distance that he wants to try is 1500 meters or 800 meters. But he kind of wonders if it's too late for him to start out going on the track and, and taking on that challenge. He's fast though. He says his 5K PB time is 23.38. It is never too late. Like go out, obviously train, stretch. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, when I was out in Jamaica, there were a few people who did not stretch and then oh, really? tried to do a track workout and then were very sore the next day. But no, it's never too late. Do it, go for it. Yeah, I think you just need to do special training. And, and like Sarah says, the faster you go, the more important the warm up and kind of flexibility and stuff's going to be. So make sure you get those dynamic movements mm. in, do some fast strides before you attempt faster workouts. Yeah. But look at specific workouts for 1500 and 800 meters. So mm. the really, the simple ones are go on the track to get a feel for it in the first place and doing 400 meter one lap efforts with short recovery 
And if you're training for the 1500, again, you probably need to be doing between six and 10 of those. That's the simplest session that you can do for this kind of work. Say that again. So, so let's, let's call it eight, eight <laughs> times 400 meters with one minute to 90 seconds recovery. Okay. And whatever pace you can run for, say, let's say six to eight of those is probably the pace that you could hold for 1500 meters. Oh, okay. Okay. Cause okay. you're doing over distance, yeah. but you've got the recoveries added in there. So, um, that I, I would say, I'd love to know how, how Jorgen gets on actually. So yeah, let's, let's obviously know. This, is, this is like something I'd be passionate yeah. about. Um, a 31 is nothing. I know it's absolutely nothing. Now that was great fun. That was great fun. I've Why do you, you sound so I've serious? I've missed you a lot. No, because it's the time of the day. Uh -huh. When Rick must... stops us talking. <laughs> but when I, when I stop you talking, but also when Sarah asks a favor. So I don't want to ask a favor this week. Oh really? I want to give you a little update in that you need to keep your eyes peeled on, and you do as well, on mm -hmm. our social channels, because I have made it my mission in life to find out whether people are sock, sock, shoe, shoe, oh or whether gosh. they're sock, shoe, not, sock, shoe. Not, how is I have, this still going so on? So far, I have asked some very high level athletes. I've asked the CEO of Puma. Oh, really? Who luckily wasn't a psychopath, <laughs> according to Andy. <laughs> one of his he team, was though, was. Sock, sock, yeah, one of his team was. <laughs> he wasn't too happy about that. What's the CEO of Puma like? Really nice. Is like, it? so nice. And most importantly, sock, sock, shoe, shoe. So he's good. Yeah. He's good. But I want to know... Are you sock, sock, shoe, shoe, or are you sock, shoe, sock, shoe? Well, maybe we'll put out a little poll so we can do it. But mm. if not, email in podcast at the Are you a psychopath? It's got to be 90% plus. It has to be. Do you think? I, I, I agree think, with Andy. Actually. I think the more people who answer, the more likely it is to be 50 50. Okay. Because think, like, think about it in like hot countries. Yeah. Mm. People are less bothered about having a bare foot. But a big debate that we were talking about when I was asking people out in Jamaica is like, what happens if you have a sock and a shoe on and then you need to run away? You're yeah, other fit. Yeah, it's a good point. You're just barefoot. I think we should think of some cool polls as well. Maybe we should poll people with what wrist they wear their watch on. That's something I think is interesting. I mean, that's just left. Anyway, oh, it's there, time. We go. there we go. It's, <laughs> time to go. Anyway, it's time to go. I'll see you all next week when we're going to talk about hills. Oh, see you then.